I-16 Property Plant and Equipment Realization of Revaluation Surplus This is a summary of the main content of I-16. Accounting treatment comprises recognition, measurement and disclosure. This presentation focuses on measurement, subsequent measurement and specifically the revaluation model where we will focus on the realization of any revaluation surplus. I-16 paragraph 41. The revaluation surplus included in equity in respect of an item of property planting equipment may be transferred directly to retained earnings when the asset is derecognized. This may involve transferring the whole of the surplus when the asset is retired or disposed of. However, some of the surplus may be transferred as the asset is used by an entity. In such a case, the amount of the surplus transferred would be the difference between the depreciation based on the revalued carrying amount of the asset and depreciation based on the asset's original cost. Transfers from revaluation surplus to retained earnings are not made through profit or loss. This is your revaluation surplus T account. It represents equity as it accumulates in equity and is presented as a column in the statement of changes in equity. When would you have a surplus? When an asset was revalued upwards. So there will be a credit entry in the revaluation surplus account and a debit entry against the asset account. So the reason you have the surplus is because an asset has been increased in value. That asset will now be depreciated over its remaining useful life to a carrying amount of zero. At the end of that useful life of the asset, the surplus should also no longer be in your accounting records. Otherwise, it is not a faithful representation of what is happening in the business. Therefore, paragraph 41 said, this revaluation surplus may now be transferred directly to retained earnings as a realization of the unrealized surplus. This realization being a debit to the revaluation surplus account, therefore making it less, and a corresponding credit to retained earnings, can either happen once off when the asset is derecognized or annually as the asset is being used. This transfer or realization does not go through profit or loss or other comprehensive income. It happens directly in equity as a line item in the statement of changes in equity. When the realization happens as the asset is used, paragraph 41 gives a very specific explanation of how to calculate that annual realization amount. And that is very specifically calculated as the difference between the depreciation based on the revalued amount and the depreciation on the original cost of the asset. How do we calculate the depreciation based on the revalued amount? That is taking the revalued amount at the beginning of the period over the remaining useful life of the asset. Let's look at an example. P Limited adopted the policy to revalue property. The company owns a single building acquired at a cost of 1.5 million on 1 January 2010. The useful life of the building was estimated as 20 years on initial recognition and has since remained unchanged. The year end of the company is 31 December. On 1 January 2012, the company revalued the building to a net replacement cost of 2 million. 
the revaluation surplus that will be created is calculated as follows. Remember, when we have net replacement cost, we compare that against the carrying amount of the asset. 1 January 2012, the carrying amount would be cost 1.5 million. The 18 over 20 is to calculate carrying amount after two of the 20 years have passed. That gives you 1 million 350. That is now compared to a net replacement cost of 2 million and you have a resultant revaluation surplus of 650,000 rand. The depreciation for the year ended 31 December 2012 will now be calculated on the net replacement cost of 2 million. What is the depreciation for the 2012 year? It is the 2 million net replacement cost over the 18 years remaining useful life. Please note you can never go back and use the 20 years anymore. That gives you triple one, triple one. What is the depreciation based on the original cost of the asset? That is the 1.5 million over 20 years, giving you 75,000. So because this asset was revalued, we had an additional depreciation charge of 3611, resulting from the revaluation. Paragraph 41 says, if it is the policy of the company to realize the surplus through use, this additional amount being the difference between depreciation on revalued amount and depreciation on original cost must now be transferred from the revaluation surplus to retained earnings. This will happen annually at the end of the year. And what would your journal entry be? You would debit revaluation surplus and you will credit retained earnings. So you reduce the surplus and you increase retained earnings. Very important. Both these entrance, entries happen directly in equity, not through profit or loss, not through OCI 3611. This will happen as long as the entity has a surplus regarding this asset. The moment you move into a deficit, net deficit situation, none, none such entry, no such entry will be required.